الحمد لله رب العالمين الذي خلق السماوات والأرض والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد قال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون وقال الله تعالى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكدين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected elders, mothers, brothers, sisters and young friends Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh During today's khutbah, I would like to address a very important yet often neglected aspect of our deen, of our faith, which is the Islamic duty to honor our parents. I would like to start by reminding us of our primary purpose in life. What is our primary purpose in life? Why did Allah Azza wa Jal created us? And why did Allah Azza wa created the earth and the world and sent us here? Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in the Quran, "A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan al-rajim, wa ma khalaqtu al-jinn wa al-insa illa liya'budun." In Surah Dhariyat, Allah Azza wa Jal is mentioning "Qasdu al-hayat." What is the purpose of life? And he said, I did not create the jinn and the mankind except for one purpose, for one reason, is to worship me. I did not send you in this world to study or to achieve anything in terms of worldly gains or to get honors or anything like that. The only purpose why I send you in this world is to worship me. That's all. Of course, we need to live and we need to survive. This is the, how the world has been created. There is asbab and we have to use those means. But the qasb al is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. By reciting this ayah about the purpose of creation, of our creation, we started with the ayah Regarding the parents, and now I've read the ayah about the purpose of creation. What is the link? So I wanted here to highlight that worshipping Allah, worshipping Allah includes fulfilling the rights and the hukuk that Allah Azza wa Jal has assigned to His creation. To worship Allah, includes fulfilling the rights and the duties that Allah Azza wa Jal has assigned to his makhluk. Now among these rights and among these obligations we owe to our parent. After Allah, the Most High, our parents are the most deserving of our service and of our devotion. Allah Azza wa Jal has elevated the maqam of our parents to such a degree that He mentions them immediately after the command to worship Allah. He said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍّ 
قل لهما قولا كريما for your lord has decreed that you worship none but him and that you be kind to your parents whether one of them or both of them has reached an old age in your life do not say to them a word of insult do not repel them but always address them in terms of honor this is in surah al-isra i would like to share with my congregation today a few examples from the quran of anbiya alayhi salatu wassalam who perfectly upheld the command to be dutiful to parents allah azza wa jalla mentioned in surah maryam wa barran bi walidati wa lam yaj'alni allah tell us that the prophet isa alayhi salam said and allah has made me dutiful to my mother and he has not made me a sad ruler similarly the prophet yahya alayhi salam is also described as being dutiful to his parents and he was not an oppressor and he was not a disobedient ruler this ayah these verses serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of treating our parents with kindness and respect regardless of our own achievement in life and regardless of our status in life i would like to stress that our success in this life and in the hereafter is linked to our relationships with our parents the words of our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam beautifully illustrated this point is mentioned in tirmidhi when he said the pleasure of allah is in the pleasure of our parents and the displeasure of allah is in the displeasure of the parents therefore i urge everyone to recognize that our parents are our gateway to paradise our parents are our gateway to jannah to drive this point home today i would like to share a hadith which is very touching always touches my heart narrated by muawiyah ibn jahim radiyallahu anhu it's about a man who came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to seek permission ijaza to join a military expedition important military expedition he came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to authorize him to go and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what did he do he asked him if he had a mother if your mother is alive and he replied yes my mother is alive then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him in a hadith from in nasai stay with your mother stay with her why because jannah paradise is under her feet similarly regarding our fathers let's not forget our fathers the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said something equal that i find equally powerful in a hadith from tirmidhi he said the father is the middle gate of paradise the father is the middle gate of jannah if you wish you can lose that gate altogether or if you wish you can keep that gate you can safeguard that gate of jannah one story that is also inspiring 
is the example of the famous Imam Ahmed Ibn Hanbal Rahimahullah. The sacrifice of Imam Ibn Hanbal's mother has played a very important role, a crucial role, a crucial role in his journey to become one of the greatest alim, one of the greatest scholar in Islamic history. Imam Ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, he used to consider, amongst all his teachers, he used to consider his mother among his greatest teachers, subhanAllah. And he used to mention how from a young age she sacrificed so much just for one reason. Why? To see him excelling through his journey of seeking knowledge. To see him excelling through his journey of seeking ilm. And because of her sacrifice, he became one of the greatest alim this ummah has witnessed. I have to address a very concerning trend that I have sadly noticed in our community overall. Is increasing disrespect towards parents. The increasing rudeness towards parents. The increasing disobedience towards parents. And this behavior unfortunately fulfills the hadith of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said regarding the sign of the day of Qiyamah he mentioned that Long time ago, and this is now apparent and evident, where he mentioned in a hadith found in Bukhari, when a slave woman gives birth to her master, when a slave woman gives birth to her master. Now what does that mean? You see, there is no slave nowadays, there is no master. But no, the ulama, have interpreted this to mean that children, children will treat their mom and dad, their parents, like slaves. How they will apply authority over their parents. This is a situation we unfortunately see and this is unfolding in our society today globally. I would like to remind our brothers and sisters today with a very heavy heart that disobedience to parents is considered one of the major sins in Islam. One of the major sins in Islam. And it's the second major sin after associating partners with Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith found in Al-Bukhari, the major sins are kabai First, associating partners with Allah. Number one. Number two. Disobedience to parents. Number two, disobedience to parents. Now look at the order. First is shirk. Second straight is disobedience to parents. Not minor, minor sins, major sins. Number three, killing a person. Killing. Subhanallah. Somebody might think killing is worse. Killing is number three. Not saying that killing is minor. Number four, False testimony, Shahadatul Zul. Now, to help us and to help our community and our youngsters improve their relationships with their mom and dad, 
I would like to offer few practical steps that I found helpful in my own life. Number one, always listen and always obey your parents. Even, even when it may displease us or even when it's not making sense or even when it is against our ego, when it is against our nerves, because this is the real test, this is the real challenge. Of course, as long as it does not contradict the Islamic teachings. Number two, provide physical care for them and provide not just physical care, but also emotional care for them and support. Especially for our elder parents who may be experiencing loneliness, anxiety, depression. If one of our parents has passed away, Rahimahullah, if for example our father has passed away, and our mother is widow and she's lived a life 30, 40, 50 years together, now suddenly they don't have a companion. Mentally, how difficult it will be for them, especially when it's a sudden death. And we are busy with our family. We think they have the house, they have the food, financially they're fine. But what about providing them with emotional care and support? Number three, always keep making dua for your parents. Consistently make dua, supplication for our parents. You can use this beautiful dua from the Quran. Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayana sagheera. Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayana sagheera. Rabbi rhamhuma kama rabbayani sagheera. My Lord, have mercy upon them. Have mercy upon them. Have they brought me up when I was small? Number four, prepare a legacy for your parents while they are still alive. How can we do that? You can establish an ongoing ongoing charitable project, Salaqa Jariya, in the name such as a masjid, a madrasa, a hospital, a well, orphanage, etc. There's so many projects that you can take on in their name while they're still alive. And also I want to emphasize that these points I have mentioned and these actions we should do them, but it should be done out of love, out of muhabba, out of ita'a to Allah, out of obedience to Allah, and out of recognition of our parents' rights and hukuk, rather than attempting to repay them fully. Ibn Umar wisely he mentioned that we can never, we can never ever fully repay even one single contraction our mothers experienced during childbirth, subhanAllah. Never. Finally, in conclusion, I would like to urge everyone to please reflect deeply on our own relationships with our parents and please work hard and strive to be qurrata a'yun, to be the coolness of your parents' eyes. If they are still 
live a life. Strive and work hard. By honoring our parents, we won't only be fulfilling a critical Islamic obligation, but also we will be securing for ourselves a path to Jannah, a path to paradise, and we will be securing Allah's pleasure. All of these beautiful Islamic teachings, reminders, is leading us to a functional and to a loving family which have a far-reaching effect upon the community and upon the society at large. Muslims should always lead with the best example. Muslims should always lead with the best example. This is da'wah in itself. How many non-Muslims embrace Islam not by reading the Quran or the Hadith, but due to the beautiful morals and due to the akhlaq and the manners of the pious Muslims. Many of them are embracing Islam also, alhamdulillah, through reading the Quran, the translation of the Quran, listening to the Quran, but also part of da'wah. The point I'm making here is through our morals, our good manners, our akhlaq. This speaks very loud. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us all obedient children dutiful children to our parents regardless of our age and regardless of our parents age we will always remain a child to our parents may allah azza wa jal unite us with our loved ones who have departed from this world ameen may allah unite us in the highest level of jannah ameen may allah azza wa jal forgive us for our shortcomings aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم <تصفيق> الحمد لله أستعينه وأستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة من يطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصهما فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وأزواجه وذريته قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر رضي الله عنه وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر رضي الله عنه وأصدقهم حياة عثمان رضي الله عنه وأقضاهم علي رضي الله عنه وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة رضي الله عنها والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة وحمزة أسد الله وأسد رسوله رضوان الله عنهم أجمعين اللهم اغفر للعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر دينك وكتابك وسنة نبيك وعبادك المؤمنين اللهم فرج هم المهمومين من المسلمين ونفس كرب المكروبين واقض الدين عن المدينين واشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أصلح أحوال المسلمين في غزة وفي لبنان وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين 
يا حي يا قيوم يا رب العالمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أنت الله لا إله إلا أنت أنت الغني ونحن الفقراء ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا على النار سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين